kind of spends. With the bringing of Inazuma, new artifacts, new weapons, Child seems to be in a better spot than what he was before. I've been playing around with him with the new Thundering Pulse weapon, and he's just seeming a lot stronger. And I think, hey, patch 2.0, I think that means we need a new updated guide for Arshna's Nyan boy, Child. And that's what this video is going to be about. We're going to be going over some general character info, talents, talent priority, which artifacts to use, the stats you want to be looking on for them, and his weapons. And lastly, due to viewers request, a showcase for Child at the end. With that said, drop me a like down below, subscribe to the channel for more Genshin Impact content, and let's hop right into the guide. All right, so Child, obviously Hydro Bow user, However, I do say bow user really lightly since he always has his water daggers out. So screw the bow, he is a hydro dagger user, let's be honest. And when you ascend him, you actually get a hydro damage bonus, which is very nice since he's only doing hydro damage. When we hop into Child's talents over here, he has his passive talent, Master of Weaponry, which increases everybody in the party's normal attack talent by one level. Then you have his Ascension Stage 1 talent, which extends his Riptide duration by 8 seconds. Riptide is that marking characters get when Child hits them. And lastly, his Ascension Stage 4 talent is Sword of Torrents, which allows him to spread Riptide even faster. And Riptide goes on them when he hits them with a crit hit. Pretty basic. Now for his normal attack, his elemental skill, and his elemental burst. Let's go over these quickly. His normal attack is only for his bow damage normal attacks with the bows and the aim shot with the bow you don't really need to care about this talent too much because like i said he's not a bow user he's a dagger user don't use him in bow stance however it is important that this talent actually upgrades your riptide flash and riptide burst damage however that is a very small portion of your dps and i wouldn't worry about it too much unless you have absolutely nothing to grind for in the game and just need to use resin somewhere next up is his elemental skill it's important to note that his elemental skill has two parts to it there's an initial stance change damage and that is considered elemental skill damage and everything after that is considered normal and charge attack damage so once he enters the stance change his whole kit changes he's now a melee user and every attack he does with daggers that's a normal attack and if it does a charged attack, that's a charge attack. And how you upgrade that is only upgrading his elemental skill. Keep that in mind. Also, don't stay in his elemental skill too long. Stay in it for up to 15 seconds so you don't screw up your rotations. Lastly, we have his elemental burst, Havoc Obliteration, which you can use in both melee and range mode. In melee mode, you're going to do more damage and you're going to activate something called Riptide Blast Damage. How that works is anybody with a Riptide marking on them, you hit them with the melee burst, it, that marking is going to explode dealing Riptide blast damage and that Riptide mark will now disappear and you'll have to reapply it. However, in range mode, you do do less damage, like a hundred and something percent less damage. However, it is a shorter animation and you get 20 energy return, meaning you're getting refunded one third of the energy cost. Now, what is the priority for all these talents? You're going to focus on getting your elemental skill up first, then his elemental burst. And if you want to, or you have more than enough resin, go ahead and upgrade his normal attack. But like I said, you're not going to be using his bow shots. The only thing you're really going to be getting damage from is this Riptide flash damage and Riptide burst damage, which is a very small part of your DPS, like I said before. Let's hop into the best artifact sets for Child. One of the sets that I would recommend is the four-piece retracing bolide. It's important to know that you're going to need a shield user in your party like Zhongli, Diona, Zinyan, Noel. There's a bunch of them out there. Two-piece set will increase that shield strength by 35%. Not too important. But the four-piece set, when you're protected by that shield, both your normal and charge attack damage will be increased by 40%. So when you're in your melee mode doing melee, melee attacks, both normal and charge, those, that damage will be increased by 40% which is why Retracing Bolide is a very solid set on Child. The former best in slot, maybe still best in slot, not too sure, is going to be the Heart of Depth set. This was released in like patch 1.2 or 1.3, don't know, tell me in the comments below. 
but Heart of Depth two-piece set will give you Hydro Damage bonus, 15% more, which is great because Child is only doing Hydro Damage. And the four-piece set, this is literally tailor-made for Child. After using his Elemental Skull, after activating it, entering Melee Stance, both his normal attack and charge attack damage will be increased by 30% for 15 seconds. Very solid. If you're currently in the process or you are going to farm this set, what you can do in the meantime is once you get two solid pieces for Heart of Depth, you can pair it up with two-piece Gladiator for some extra attack percent, pair it up with two-piece of the Shimanawas for more attack percent, or even pair it up with Noblesse Oblige for some extra elemental burst damage. But four-piece is still better than all those other mix and match options. And the last set I want to recommend, possibly a new best in slot for Child, since Child and Yoimiya are very similar. This set was made for Yoimiya, but it does work on Child very well, I believe. That is going to be the Shimanawa's Reminiscence set. Two-piece set will give you attack plus 18%. That's not as solid as the 15% hydro damage, don't get me wrong, but 18% attack bonus, nothing to sneeze at. And with the four-piece set effect, when casting the elemental skill, so once he enters dagger mode, if the character has 15 or more energy, they will lose 15 energy, but at, for losing 15 energy, they will gain a 50% increase in normal and charged and plunging attack damage for 10 seconds. That's important to note. That's important to note. You can use your elemental burst in ranged mode. That will ensure you have 20 energy at all time. Now, you pop your elemental skill, you're going to eat up 15 of that energy, and now your normal and charge attacks are going to do 50% more damage for the next 10 seconds. I think this is a very solid set, and you should maybe try it out. I will definitely be trying it out, and I will probably make an update video on the set later on. So stay tuned for that. So to quickly summarize, what I recommend is four piece Bolide, four piece Heart of Depth, and four piece Shinam Shimanawa's Reminiscence. Now let's talk about the stats that you're gonna be wanting. On your flower, you're locked into HP. On your feather, you're locked onto attack. You want attack percent on your timepiece, hydro damage bonus on your goblet, and crit rate or crit damage on your circlet. As for the substats, you're going to be wanting to look for crit rate, crit damage, looking for that 1 to 2 ratio. You're going to then want attack percent. After that, it's like anything offensive. You can want energy recharge or elemental mastery. Elemental mastery is kind of iffy on child because child applies hydro so fast. He's normally not the one creating the reactions. So let's get into child's weapons. Thundering Pulse is the new best in slot weapon. Formerly, it was the Skyward Heart, now it's Thundering Pulse. This weapon was created for Yoimiya, but because Yoimiya and Child are very similar, like I've said before, Thundering Pulse works very well on Child. Has great base attack, more than a circlet's amount of crit damage, and in its passive, it'll give you 20% attack percent. And there's these things called Thunder Emblems that you can get in three different ways. You can stack up to three of them as well. You have to have less than 100% energy, hit them with a normal attack, and use your elemental skill. That'll give you full stacks, and what that will do is give you either 12, 24, or 40% more damage in your normal attacks, which is great for Child when he's using his dagger modes. You don't get charge attack damage, but your normal attack damage will just be through the roof, making this weapon much more better than the second best weapon, the Skyward Harp. Skyward Harp is also a very solid weapon if you have it. Highest base attack in the game, gives you crit rate as a substat, and the passive will give you crit damage and a little bit of extra physical damage every uh, 4 seconds at Refinement 1, 3.5 at Refinement 2. The third 5-star weapon, the Amos Bow, very solid for child, has a great base attack, gives you a huge boost in attack percent, and what I like about the passive here is that it increases your normal and charge attack damage by 12%. Not as good as a Thundering Pulse, but still very solid. It's just a really good 5-star bow for Child. Let's get into the 4-star bows, and the first one we have up is going to be the Veridescent Hunt. Very solid weapon. Good base attack for a 4-star weapon. 
gives you the most crit rate out of any of the bows and its passive is just great it gives you like this little cyclone thing it groups the enemies allowing you to just trigger riptide flash bash whatever the hell it is on all the enemies just further increasing your dps really solid weapon for child and i would honestly use viridescent hunt rather than the rust which can out damage the viridescent hunt in some in some scenarios but yeah i would still use viridescent over rust rust is still a very good weapon has good base attack huge attack percent uh bonus and it's Passive increases your normal attack damage. I think it's 40% at refinement rank 1, 80% at refinement rank 5, but it does come at the cost of decreasing your charge attack damage, and you do like to do some charge attacks with child every now and then. Another solid 4-star weapon is actually the Black Cliff Warbow. Black Cliff Warbow gives you good base attack, crit damage as a substat, and the passive will give you more attack percent i believe it's 12 percent for every enemy you kill and that stack will last up to 30 seconds and you can gain three stacks meaning if you kill three enemies very close in time to each other you'll have a 36 percent attack percent bonus for the next 30 seconds and lastly the free-to-play option which i honestly love i would use this free-to-play option and that's going to be the hamayumi the new craftable weapon in inazuma it's easy refinements which can make it better than a lot of the four stars on this list has decent base attack uh the sub stack gives you attack percent which is nice the passive increases your normal attack by 16 percent and charge attacks by 12 percent and the really cool thing about this weapon is if your energy is full which is not really ideal for child since his elemental burst does a lot of damage but if your energy is full the effect will double so that 16% will become 32 and that 12% for his charge attacks will become 24%. I really like this weapon and I think it could be really good. Definitely the best free to play option out there. Now since the build for child is done, uh, we're going to get into the showcase for his damage. But before I do that, I'm just going to show off his stats, his weapons and his artifacts just show you what my current build is. Right now we have 2214 attack. And when we go to his elemental mastery, zero, doesn't matter. Crit rate, 66.8%. Good, but not great. Crit damage, 193.9%, pretty solid. And when we come down to his hydro damage bonus, we're sitting at 90.4%, which is very good. We come over to his weapon. We got a R5 Thundering Pulse, level 90. And his artifacts were rocking a four piece Heart of Depth set. And let's show off the stub stats. We, here's the flower, the feather, the timepiece, the goblet. I'm actually very happy with this goblet. And the circlet. All right, first things first, I want to inflate my numbers a bit by attacking a pyro infused enemy, if you know what I mean. Except the pyro hypostasis is just really annoying, to be quite honest. Look at this guy. I really hate that first shield. There we go. That's better. That's Beto's energy. All right, let's go. As you can see, 36,000 on that. And yeah. <laughs> Pyro cube stood no chance whatsoever. All right, this part of the showcase, we just go against the beefiest enemy out there, and that's gonna be this Primo v Geo Visha. Look at this free to play damage by Bennett right now. Just need to know when we can do normal damage. And that's gonna be now. All right, let's go. I also changed the team a bit. I put Zing Cho in because Zing Cho is just a turret, and when his rain swords hit, it actually decreases Hydro Res. So you should be seeing some big numbers here by child. Like 20,000, I'm pretty sure I'm seeing. And that's pretty big. And we almost killed him in one rotation. It's pretty solid. Benny should have enough energy. Well, let's pop that down and child will be ready now. And just like that. Pretty simple. And for the last part of the showcase, we're just going to be... Popping into Spiral Abyss here. Floor 12, Chamber 1. Just to get a nice little idea of how much damage Child can do. 
bam with the baseball bat right there 187,000 this guy's running away but what else would he be doing right pop that pop that and let's go oh they're grouped together as well that's great Unfortunately, I do not have a C6 child, meaning I could be on melee mode the whole time. Really wish I could. And bam. Saw my... And just like that. And that's going to be it for the child guide. Hopefully you all enjoyed it, especially that showcase at the end. Let me know if you want to see me do more showcases at the end of guides just to get an idea of how strong characters are. But yeah, with that said... Drop a like and until next time, peace.